Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, the Halloween edition. Nice background graphic there created for us by one of our supporters, which interestingly enough, we know her as Spooky uh, on social media and on our chat. Uh, her name's Kari from over in the UK, so thanks for making this nice graphic. I've got kids and they're excited about doing some trick-or-treating later today, uh, maybe a little bit of normalcy in what has otherwise been a very abnormal and different kind of year. Uh, unfortunately, I come to you and present to you some rather alarming news here in the regards to um, tropical cyclones, with regards to tropical cyclones, I should say. Um, this is a typhoon, or super typhoon in this case, Goni, I think is how you pronounce it, G-O-N-I, or Raleigh, R-O-L-L-Y, if it's in the Philippines area, uh, they, they name it, and whatever you call it, it is extremely dangerous and it is headed for collision course here with the Philippines over the next several hours. Um, your eyes are not deceiving you, it is moving to the west-southwest with time here uh, towards Catanduanes Island and then eventually into the Bacala region, Legazpi, and these are the areas where our man Brent was for Typhoon um, Tisoy last year uh, at the end of November and he knows that region well he would be there for this one more than likely if it wasn't for the dadgum virus we actually have a uh, plan in place for taking equipment to the Westpac and Brent is the guy to do it um, I mean even Josh Morgerman and James Reynolds as far as I know cannot get there it's just a changed world um, and those folks especially James and Josh do a great job of documenting and getting the word out as to what is happening um, Brent did a great job last year for us for the hurricane track brand and we rely on these folks uh, to do this especially the seasoned quote-unquote chasers these typhoon hunters James Reynolds knows this area very well he's of course from Japan um, and I don't think anybody's there that's not already in the Philippines. I'm, I might be mistaken, but I haven't seen any indication of such. Um, and so it'll just be interesting to see what happens with this, because we just had a typhoon that went through here recently, this same general vicinity. And so communications and infrastructure down here are already in a weakened state. It has not been a very active Westpac typhoon season. And then all of a sudden, that old expression, it only takes one, well, here you go. So this will be heading in uh, for landfall later at peak intensity here, probably about 185 miles per hour. Think Irma in 2017. And what it did down in areas like Barbuda, uh, over at St. Bartolome, etc. And that'll be what happens with this in the Philippines. And so these areas, that right front quadrant up there, this is the worst part. Uh, where the onshore flow will happen, offshore flow over on this side. So it's going to matter where this comes in in terms of who gets the worst damage. And up here in this bay, um, and I'll show you a Google map in just a moment, it's just going to matter very much where the center makes landfall, where that core comes in. And if we zoom in here, just to give you an idea of what's what and where's where, here's Manila, gigantic population center over in the Philippines, as you know. And the typhoon coming in here to the west-southwest for now is eventually going to bend back off to the west and could bring some pretty bad weather to Manila in vicinity. We'll just have to wait and see. But initially, the first landfall is going to be down here uh, along this area of the Philippines. Uh, first, Catanduanes Island, trying to pronounce that correct, uh, Naga up here, La uh, Tobacco City, and Legaspi City, this is where Morgaman was. Um, our guy Brent was up through this area last year. We know the area fairly well through their work. And in fact, I will feature it, if I can ever finish it, in episode 8 of season 1 of the Hurricane Highway. The last episode is about last year's typhoon, Tisoy. Um, but this area, really going to take it on the chin through here. And these little islands through here, it's going to matter so much where that core comes in in terms of the wind and the surge, uh, that counterclockwise flow, it's different over in this part of the world than it is in the United States 
uh, and in parts of the Western Caribbean, etc., and even the Caribbean islands uh, out on the eastern part of the Caribbean, where Brent is from, St. John, you know, it's a totally different region over here. You got volcanoes. You can see some of those showing up here, even in this relief version of the Google Map. Um, so a real, real bad situation. The flooding that could happen through here. Um, it's just not good. We're going to hear some pretty grim things coming out of the area, unfortunately. Brent has a contact down there. We're trying to keep in touch with her. I've got a contact over in Manila, and I will try to stay in touch with him to see what we can learn. Uh, if you're in the area, you know people down there, tag me on social media, Twitter and uh, YouTube, especially in the comments, etc. And I'll do the best I can to vet the information. You know, there's the propensity of getting some bad info out there if you're not careful. But this is just an ugly, ugly situation that kind of happened quickly. We're all focused on a lot of other things. Hurricanes in the U.S., the geopolitical stuff going on, the pandemic, and then this. I swear, it reminds me, like the best way to put it, you remember that show on Netflix, House of Cards? This is like House of Cards meets the Day After Tomorrow movie. Seriously, it's like if House of, House of Cards and the Day After Tomorrow mashed up, that's what 2020 reminds me of. And I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm not trying to be snarky or funny in any way. It's just like our own freak show here for the human race. It's just crazy. And in the Atlantic, we got to deal with this. Uh, Invest Area 96L. This is a done deal. This is going to become our next name storm, and it'll be ETA, E-T-A. Unbelievable. This will break the record for the most named storms. It's kind of a technical thing. Yes, we had 28 cyclones in 2005, tropical cyclones. One of them was added later. That gave us 28, but we haven't ever had officially 28 names, and this will be the first time that we do that when this gets named as ADA, uh, maybe later today or tonight. But this is well on its way to becoming a depression. It is going to be heading into the general direction of Central America, and this is another area that we have to really worry about. You know, the people that live along hillsides. We remember Mitch back in 1998. This is a very vulnerable region for a lot of reasons from these tropical cyclones. And in this situation, the biggest impact is from rainfall. And you can get really, really shocking amounts of death and destruction from ridiculous amounts of rainfall in that area. And we're going to have to watch this very closely. And then there's the matter of where does this end up? Is it going to just go on across and into the Pacific? I talked about this in my update yesterday morning. That seems to be what is favored by many of the reliable models uh, as high pressure kind of builds over this region. And you got strong high pressure over the Atlantic and this little shortcut through here is just not strong enough to lure it north, so to speak. So the most likely scenario still is for this to go into Central America. But as you're well aware, there are models that are indicating it comes over, mills around, comes up through here and heads towards Florida inside of a week. That's not 10 days out. That's about a week out. And that's only a little bit beyond the five day window that we typically like to look at. It's kind of like that warning shot that I so often talk about looking for keys to the game down the road. You know, that a lot of people get sold on the fact that, oh, it's going to go into Central America and that's that. And then you start seeing things change and maybe it slows down and comes more north. Uh, we'll just have to see. I'll show you some of the modeling in just a moment. The vorticity signature for 96L, fairly stout down here north of the ABC Islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, where there have been impacts down there. Heavy rain, squally conditions. Um, Marcel down there, another Marcel. I know two Marcels now. One of them personally. Uh, the other one, Marcel down in the, um, I think he's from Curacao, um, sent me some pictures on Facebook, I think it was yesterday. So many ways to communicate with people. It's hard to keep up. And yes, there are impacts down there, kind of a rare thing, but squally weather and um, you know high humidity, etc. as this passes through to the north. All right, so looking at 96 on satellite from weathernerds.org. Wow. I mean, that is really, I mean, talk about escalating quickly. Look at the banding that's going on in here. Very evident banding, low level circulation in there. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. This is on its way to, de to developing. You got lightning in these outer bands, uh, an indication of a lot of instability. 
and the structure is is getting better organized by the hour. This will be a tropical depression at 5 p.m., I'm certain of it, and it's going to go on to become a hurricane in the Caribbean Sea. And we're going to have to really, really watch this for a variety of reasons. If we look at the GFS, now I want to point out that this is the same level of the atmosphere, 850 millibars right there, 5,000 feet up, that this particular satellite shot is also representing. This is a analysis, or an analysis, whatever. This is an analysis, this is a satellite product. And this comes, it's the vorticity product. It comes from the University of Wisconsin. So this is not a forecast. This is the actual analysis, you understand that? And there, I'll point it out, again, that is the vorticity, the little pocket of energy associated with 96L. The GFS, at its initialization here, and then hour, you know, six hours out, this would have been valid at 2 p.m. today, so it's only about 45 minutes old, if you will. That's not, I mean, you know, I guess you could argue it's not that far off, but in terms of the reality, if you look at this, this is what the GFS was forecasting. This is the reality. I guess they're close enough, but then when you want to compare the Euro and its analysis, where it thinks everything is, the Euro is a little bit better organized. So the European might have a better, better handle on this in the near term, the now term, right now. You know, because then we go look at the satellite picture and you go, oh yeah, I mean, you know, it's definitely better organized on satellite than it is in the GFS, but not by much. It's not like there's nothing there in the GFS. And then maybe we're just, you know, nitpicking things as it were, but it matters in terms of initialization and then where you go. So let's look out uh, for the next five days. This is the GFS. There's 24 hours and 48 hours uh, right there. And I think this will be much more organized and stronger at this point. And then, and you can already see the players coming in. Here's this big high pressure area building over uh, Texas and the western Gulf of Mexico, ridging down into, Me into Mexico proper as this strong trough. This is your magnet right here. This is what would normally draw this up and into that trough. But it doesn't always work that way because everything is moving. It's always fluid. So by 72 hours, the system not consolidated very well. You see these little pockets through here. Nothing's really bundled. It's trying to the east of Nicaragua, but more than likely this is already pretty strong and deep in the atmosphere. And so it'll more than likely get caught underneath this ridge and head on into Me uh, Mexico, into Central America, what I meant to say. More than likely, I mean, that's what makes sense, but it's not a guarantee, you know. Um, maybe it does struggle a little bit. Maybe it's not quite as organized three days out. So finally at day four here, let's move it on out. It never quite makes landfall. You see it's just kind of spinning around. And by day five, just making landfall at the Honduras-Nicaragua border. Um, and then from there, we just have to wait and see. There is ridging to the north. You can see the outline of that there. Fairly deep ridging. Overall, that's a strong area of high pressure. And this, of course, is Thursday, two days after Election Day. And all the stuff, <laughs> who knows what things are going to be like that day, right? And then down in the Caribbean, we got to be watching this. Is it going to just go on into Central America, which will be a very big problem. Of course it will. But for Cuba, the Cayman Islands through here, Jamaica even, and then, of course, South Florida and the Bahamas, we are really watching this very closely for obvious reasons. You know, it could come north. And if we just look at days six and seven, we see the, the potential there. Day six, it starts to pop out. And by day seven, it starts to move up towards Cuba in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands. We go backwards in time. And you see how this evolves. You know, it's it just takes it a lot longer to organize in the GFS. That's what's interesting to me. Um, and so if it's stronger earlier, I believe it has a better chance of going into Central America and maybe never coming out. And that could be the saving grace for the Caymans, Cuba, and Florida at the expense of our friends down in Central America. And it would be really bad for them, it looks like. So the European, a different story than the GFS. Absolutely. Here it is initially, 24, 48, 72, 96, 
120, 144, 168. But I wonder, and you see what's happening at a week out, the Euro trying to develop another system here in the Northwest Caribbean as this one dies away, and they have always seemed to come in pairs. What is up with that? Laura Marco, you know, I'm trying to remember the rest that came in pairs. Oh my gosh, just been so busy. You know, we did have, um, I think Sally was by itself, I'm trying to remember. But we definitely had uh, Gamma and Delta. Um, we had Sally, and um, not too long after we had Beta. It's just been one after another. But they do seem to come in these sort of twins, if you will, instead of identical twins, or more like paternal twins, I think is what you call it. Isn't that right? You know what I'm saying? They're not identical, obviously. But the Euro is trying to develop something else. Uh, that's a week out, and then by day eight and day nine and day, well, day 10 isn't out yet. Just a general large area of low pressure down here makes me wonder, is there just going to be a blend of these two and we still end up with a potential issue in the Northwest Caribbean sometime in the first week of November? See, it's very confounding. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. And by the way, I didn't turn the webcam on today. Um, I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> Being lazy. Didn't want to look like I wanted to be presentable. Uh, so whatever. That's why, in case you missed me. Um, so, gosh, a lot to watch. You know, what a week coming up. The, the super typhoon in the Pacific. It just, oh, I understand. It's very stressful. And just a quick piece of advice I heard from a wonderful person. I've never met this person in person, but I've gotten to know her over Patreon. Uh, Anne down in Miami and talking about how stressful this is just to have to think about it. So my advice to you, and I'm certainly not a psychologist or a psychiatrist or anything like that, but I've been through a lot of hurricanes. I've seen people that have dealt with them. I know about stress. You know, I'm going to try to speak from some experience. It's okay to be stressed. It's okay to have anxiety and to not like this and to not want to hear about it. But I want you to think of it in a different light. Try to look at it as a glass half full situation. Be optimistic. We do have the foresight of computer models and understanding that there could be a threat from a weather system days in advance. So try to look at it from that perspective. You know what? At least I know that that could be coming. I don't know what's going to happen with this scenario politics, this scenario pandemic, this scenario social unrest. We don't know. And there are a lot of people with their opinions about that. And it's very, very spooky. It really is. It's annoying sometimes. But with hurricanes, the science is a lot more sound. And people like myself, I don't know everything, but I do the best I can. You got the National Hurricane Center. You got the Weather Service. You have other people that you trust on social media. Find those people and trust in what they're saying. Trust in the science that we have the gift of knowing in advance. And try to use that to your advantage instead of being worried about it and scared of it and anxiety ridden. Think of it as, you know what? I think this might be something that I could get ready for. I know hurricanes. I know everything else is chaotic. But doggone it, I know that there could be a threat. At least that's something that I have control over in terms of what I do about it. I can do that. I can control that. You look at the information, you can control what you do about it. And I think that's a positive thing. I try to help you out as best I can with my experiences. I've seen how people deal with it, especially one after the other after the other. And so don't let that come over you and take over you. With everything else that's going on, think positive. I know that's easy for me to say sitting on the other side of the screen, but everything is not doom and gloom. It's not, because we do have the gift of science and forecasting, and we know that it's coming in advance, whether it's the Philippines Central America, maybe Florida, Cuba, Caymans, I don't know. But at least it will not catch us by surprise. And that, my friends, is good news on a day when there's so much other bad news and other stuff going on. All right? All right. So, uh, trick or treat tonight for me and the kids. If you're going to be doing that, be safe out there. And all that that implies, I uh, need you back to watch these videos in the future because without you, there's no reason for me. Have a great rest of the last day of October. Tomorrow's November, and it'll just keep on rolling on, and we'll keep doing what we do. We'll keep you informed. We'll keep you ahead of it the best that we can working together. I am Mark Suddeth. As always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it more than you will ever know. 
for Hurricane Track. I will talk to you again tomorrow.